Hi everyone, in the last tutorial I showed you how to create a new glitch account and start working here in this index.html page to start working with a very basic HTML file. And hopefully you got some practice using some h1 tags, some p tags, and some other uh, smaller tags, like if I wanted to bold something I could type in strong before it. And it, you see that it kind of filled in here, and I can just go ahead and retype that in and delete the other one, but, but that's the cool thing about these coding programs is sometimes they'll open and close them for you because that's really important in HTML. When you open a tag, you also need to close it. So every single tag that you see here opened is pretty much closed as well. The title opens, it closes. The body opens, it closes. Now, you might notice a few things about these tags. Not every tag is the same. For example, some of these tags, like this meta tag, only opens and it doesn't close. Now that's unique to the meta tag. On meta tags, you don't need to close them. And there are certain tags that also need a little bit more information. So it might be well and good to have a body, which is all the visible content of my site, and not have any color to it or any other attributes to it. But sometimes you might want to start working inside this tag to start affecting different characters and attributes within it. And so what I can do is I can go inside this tag, the body tag, I can do a little space bar, and then I can type in bg color equals quote black. Okay, what this is gonna do is it's going to say if you have a body tag inside of there, I want it to change the background color. This is known as an attribute. There are many different attributes that you might add to a tag. This is the bg color attribute. And then here I've got a value to decide what exactly, what value needs to be associated with it. So I could put any color in here, really. So once I do that, I can go ahead and take a look at this file. And really, instead of doing the share method, this time I'm just gonna click show, and I wanna show it in a new window. And there it is, it's my website, black text on a black background, not very visible. So I probably would not want a black background. But what I could do is something like maybe blue, and I can go ahead and take this, and you see it auto-refreshed. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, and so basically this is a way to add extra content within different, you know, what they call attributes within these tags. Now, I don't have to have a attribute and value for the body tag. Just like I don't necessarily need to add an attribute value to this paragraph tag, but I might want to do something like align it to the center. P, I could add a line equals center. And what that's gonna do is it's going to center my paragraph. I can click over here and now you can see my paragraph is in the center of the page. Now by default, paragraphs are aligned left and they should always be aligned left because if we're providing lots of content, it would not look well designed if it's centered. So we try to stay away from that. Now when it comes to Attributes and values, some tags do not need attributes and values, but some tags do need attributes and values. For example, this A tag. Okay, over here on the right, you'll see my, I've got an A tag, which actually stands for anchor. Anchor opens here and it closes here. Now, it's got the href equals quote glitch.com website as the value and the attribute. If this was simply just an A tag that opened up and closed right away, just like the other tags, it would not work, okay? I can go over here and this link is not working anymore at all. But because it does need this href equals and then the value, um, now when I click over here, it does work, okay? So links require the use of an attribute and a value. Now, of course, the more links that you put in, the more you have to make sure that they are coded correctly. And so for example, if I want to say something like, I teach at Texas State University, okay? Now, the word Texas State University is the one that I'm gonna to wanna to link, okay? So I will want to code before it. Let me go ahead and take this code, and go ahead and copy it. I'll just go ahead and cut it, and I'll paste it here. So now, this word, Texas State University, is the one that will be linked, okay? Now, 
instead of doing httpsglitch.com, I want to type in txstate.edu. Okay, now I can click over here on the website and it works, links to Texas State University. That's great. Now I could add another attribute and value. This attribute is href and I can go back into this tag and add even another one. I'm gonna type in one target equals quote underscore blank. Now what this attribute is doing is it's making this window open in a new window. This link will now open in a new window. So when I go back to my page, I can click here and instead of going, navigating to this Texas State website, it's going to open a new tab and go there. Now the value of that is that they're still on my website and often external links like that should open in new windows, new browser tabs. So I recommend that you do that. Now this one A tag has one attribute and value and then it's got another attribute and value. So there's two attributes and two values and this closes the whole tag altogether. So this one tag has two attributes and two values. Okay. Now links require the use of a, uh, a attribute and value and so do images. Okay. If I want to put an image here, I can go ahead and do img src equals file name dot jpg. Now we go ahead and close this. This is a unique tag. The image tag is one that's unique because it both opens and closes all in one line. Much like the meta tag. There's no closing of the meta tag. There's no closing of the image tag. There are very few um, tags that do this. Now, it's not going to show my file name.jpg because I don't have that loaded here. Normally, if I was working within a file editor like text edit or sublime text or others like Atom or brackets, I can edit this and as long as this picture was in the same place as my file, it would find it and it would display it. But right now it's going to come up as a broken image because it doesn't know where this file is. I don't really have a reference for that. The way Glitch works as it relates to images is we have to go into this assets folder and actually upload images into it so that we can, we can load it. So I'm going to go to pixabay.com and download a picture of just why not do this this cool eagle here go ahead and take it save image as go ahead and oops I'm just gonna go free download let's make a smaller version go ahead and say I'm not a robot download it now I can go back to my assets folder and I can upload that image right here and what it's doing is it's actually putting it on the server. So if I want to use it, I can just click on the image and it's going to give me the direct link to it. All I have to do is press copy so I can copy the resource. Then I can go back into my index file and instead of file name.jpg, I can paste in that long URL. And now when I click over here, there's my image. Now a few things are wrong with this image. One is that it's really big. And so I can go into this tag and I can start attributing and valuing it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a width. Let's do with width equals quote 25%. What that's gonna do is it's going to make the width of this image 25% width of the window that it's in. So now it's only a quarter the size of the window no matter how big or small the window may be. It's kind of cool. Um, you could also do 50% um, or you could type in a pixel number. So if you wanted it to be a width of 1200, what that's going to do is going to make it 1200 pixels wide. Now notice that I'm not typing in um, a height. What a height would do is it would force it to be a specific height and I don't want to force it to be a width and a height. It's auto proportioning so it's going to be just fine if you only give it a width. If I were to give it a height equals 1200, you'll see that it's going to be a very warped image. Okay, very uh, square image and that's not what I want to do with images. I don't want to warp them. So best to do just a width or just a height. And there's a few other attributes and values we might want to add to images. One would be align. Align equals left. 
Now, alignment both refers to how the image is being aligned. So if you want it to be aligned left or right, that's how you would do it. Just align equals quote left. But also, it deals with the way that text wraps around the image. So if I want this text to come up next to the image, that's also what this alignment will do. You'll notice that when I click here, now my text is over here, lined up next to it. My image is lined left and my text is lined left. If I wanna change that, I can make the image, image lined right and I can go here and now my image is on the right and my text is on the left. So you might wanna mess a little bit with the image alignment. And then one last one that I'm gonna show you with images is alt text, alt equals now this is where we can actually start captioning or writing a little bit about our, our image. So eagle, um, these are alternate words that you might use for people who have visual disabilities or are un unable to see the image. And so this allows you to actually type out what they might see. Now this is one image, and how many attributes and values does it have? Well it has one for the source, so that's one attribute and value. It's got another one for width, another one for alignment, and then another one for alt. This one tag has one, two, three, four attributes and four values. Now it needs this one to work, right? It needs the source. Okay, so images are one unique tag that requires the use of an attribute and a value to work.